We are back, fresh off of that Labor Day weekend on a Wednesday hump day. How to show on the streets, number one forum for Crimson Tide football. News, notes, and information with yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. In my own words, appreciating everybody for tuning in, checking out the show on today as we do this, bringing the show from Tuscaloosa, streaming this to you via YouTube. Speaking of the channel, go ahead right now, give a thumbs up, drop a like on the show, hit that subscribe button, and turn all of those notifications on so that way you can have the best news, notes, updates, alerts, and analysis on your Crimson Tide. It's not just YouTube. To all my Facebook people out there, we're streaming on Facebook as well. So to all my Facebook friends out there, coming to you guys also. But we have a lot to talk about here on today's show. I enjoyed my Memorial uh, Labor Day weekend. Excuse me. You know, Monday was fun. Getting the chance to, rela- to, rela- uh, to rest, relax, enjoy some barbecue with the family. But... It's always all the more exciting to be on here talking Crimson Tide football with you, the Alabama football fans. I mean, uh, last week was week one of the college football season. Got a chance to watch some great games. Uh, Tomorrow, being Thursday, the NFL season starts. and We've got Texans versus Chiefs. we got Pat Mahomes versus Deshaun Watson. Both quarterbacks got paid. That's going to be a fun pro football game to watch a lot of excitement going on the crimson tide starting its season on saturday september 26th against those missouri tigers alabama right now continuing with fall camp it's wrapping up week four of fall practice on this weekend on saturday it will be at bryant denny stadium for its second scrimmage and that'll be something to Look forward to as well. But we want your energy, your passion, your excitement, your enthusiasm. We want you to be a part of the show. And you can do this by calling 205-448-1358. The number to call in to let your voice be heard, 205-448-1358. And one more time, 205-448-1358. Want to hear from you guys as we talk about discuss break down crimson tire football as always it's great to be back with the man the myth the legend the maestro in the production studio one john ivory and later on the show we got two great guests joining us we got a great game prepared with me and former you know alabama wide receiver matt cadell and then also we got justin smith the lead scouting and recruiting analyst for tda coming on here to give us some big news on the recruiting trail for the Crimson Tide. But we start everything off. We start the day's show off with this here. And for the Alabama quarterback room, Coach Saban and the Alabama quarterback room here on uh, last week or over the weekend on Saturday, you know, the Crimson Tide had its a it's had a game-like practice, a game-like practice, game situation type practice at Bryant-Denny and uh, – in this practice here, Coach Saban is putting his players in different uh, situations, whether it being you score the ball here or you're in a two-minute drill here or whatever the case may be. He puts the team in game-like situations and see, can the offense drive the football? Can the offense work the field? Can the offense score touchdowns? Can the defense play up to snuff as well? Also, and in terms of the quarterbacks, Mac Jones is continuing to show that and prove that he has everything that Alabama needs in order to win a national championship. Jones is continuing to rise and show the coaching staff, the fans, his teammates, and himself that he can lead this team. He can take this team, you know, and win. A national championship with this group. I know in the first scrimmage he had three touchdowns. He completed 21 of 36 passes. People were kind of concerned with the completion percentage, concerned with the amount of throws that he completed in that first scrimmage, but came back in the game like practice did a phenomenal job uh court to nick saban he had a really really good day out there on the field according to sources i spoke with he completed nearly every pass he threw out there to the receivers on the field really commanded controlled was in full full uh sync there you know with the offense and he also scored on every drive that he was out there you know on the field 
with the first team offense. Now, for a lot of you as fans, there's been you know, some confusion in a lot of the information you guys have been hearing. You guys have been wanting more clarification on things and by things I'm referring to. You hear little news and notes and nuggets from practice about how the offense is performing well. Mac Jones doing well at quarterback. The offense moving the football. Offense uh, scoring points. Offense playing well. But you also hear nuggets about how the defense has been playing. Defense has looked good. Guys flying around the football. Defensive ends and outside linebackers pressuring the pocket, hitting the pocket, collapsing the pocket. The communication led by Dylan Moses has been top notch. And the defensive secondary has played well. So with all these different forms of information coming at you, for a lot of you as fans, it's okay What's really going on? Is the offense really this good? Is the defense playing bad? Is the defense taking a back seat? Like, bring some clarity. Bring some confirmation. Bring something that will settle me in terms of this Alabama football program. So right now, I am going to bring a lot of confirmation to or a lot of a clarification to what you have been hearing. So in the first scrimmage and in the game-like practice, both the offense and the defense has played well for the Crimson Tide. Coach Saban had it as, you know, ones against ones and twos against twos. G great on great, best on best, good on good, right? And defensively, the defense is much improved. The defense is a lead. The defense has gone back to those groups in years past that have won national championships under Coach Saban. It is the defensive line and the outside linebackers collapsing the pocket. You are seeing, you are hearing correctly about the inside linebackers led by Dylan Moses communicating calls correctly and guys flying around the field. You are hearing correctly about the Alabama secondary playing faster, playing physical, playing stronger. All of those things are 100% true. And when you look at other teams in the SEC this season, especially with a 10-game conference-only schedule, who are the teams that will have the offensive firepower to challenge this Alabama defense? That's going to be a, a huge question because with Georgia, you know, Georgia thought that Jamie Newman was the guy. It thought Newman was the piece it was missing to give it a shot in the arm. You had you had the people in Las Vegas in the desert that had Newman with 14 to 1 odds to win the Heisman. But Jamie Newman looks at Kirby Smart, hey, you know, don't want to play for this program. He opts out and is preparing for the 2021 NFL Draft. So now George is forced to look at either JT Daniels, the transfer from USC, who still has not been cleared from his knee issue, or they have to look at Carson Beck, the freshman. On top of that, uh, it will not have Dominic Blaylock at wide receiver. He sustained a serious knee injury in fall camp. So there's Georgia. When you look at LSU, they have to feel – an entire football team. You know, offensively, Joe Burrow is gone. Clyde edwards Elaire is gone. Justin Jefferson's gone. Jamar Chase gone. Thaddeus Moss gone. I mean, all of those guys offensively, plus Joe Brady, gone. So, offensively, it's Miles Brennan and the little engine that could. Can LSU trust the freshman? Can LSU trust other players offensively? to give Alabama that run. When you look at Texas A&M, I mean, it's, you know, uh, it's Kellen Mond. You know, they've got players at running back and wide receiver from the offensive line, but, you know, for Kellen Mond, is this his moment to go, you know, from good to great at quarterback? Ole Miss and Tennessee, they have to create the horses on that side of the football because they don't have – all of the horses offensively to really run with Alabama, Mississippi State, uh, Kylan Hill, great running back, K.J. Costello, the transfer from Stanford. He's got big-time productivity as a quarterback, but who are the receivers for Mississippi State? So defensively for Alabama, will it have offensive competition uh, outside of what it's facing every day in practice to prepare it for you know this upcoming season so, so the, the Alabama defense has been strong Alabama defense has been great and, and it goes back to something Brian Robinson mentioned on Monday during his presser at the running back position he talked about how there are moments where 
the defense have, has gotten the best of us in practice, and we have gotten the better of the defense in practice. So it's, it, it goes both ways here. So offensively, offensively, this is huge because even though the defense is collapsing the pocket, even though the defense is getting pressure, even though the defense is playing better, it's in the face of Mac Jones, it's all surrounding Mac Jones, it's putting pressure on him, it's making it hard on him to make plays. The young man is still out there throwing darts, making plays, you know, scoring points, putting the ball in the hands of these receivers. He's still out here doing big time things. And if Mac Jones is out here doing big time things, moving the football against a defense that will be the best in college football this season, then imagine how good he's going to be when he's facing those defenses that are going to go all out on him or going to bring an extra rush, bring an extra blitz, bring an extra pressure. If he's being calm, cool, and composed in the pocket right now with Alabama's defense, but this is going to be great seeing him against other defenses in this uh, coming up in this season. So Coach Saban mentioned how Jones has had a great week all week in practice. He did some great things in the first scrimmage. He did even better in the live game-like practice over – on last week, and looking forward to seeing his jump here this week as Alabama has this scrimmage on Saturday. So he's continuing to show and prove, hey, Bryce Young is really talented. Paul Tyson is really good, but I'm somebody that has what it takes to take this Alabama team and win a national championship. And it's like, it's like basketball, for example. There's like 10 to 15 players in the NBA where – you know, coaches are saying, go out there and get me a bucket. We're going to create an isolation for you. Go out there and get me a bucket. And while we want to see balance this year for Alabama, at the same time, fans, you want to have that feeling where if we want to go out there and, sc and score points, if we want to go out there and drop 40 and 50 points, it will. If, if we could, and seeing how – Tua Tagovailoa was able to do that. Can Mac Jones do that? Can we look at Mac Jones in a moment where we want to score 40 or 50 points at any given time that we want to and still be able to do that? Jones showed you last year against Arkansas and Auburn he can do that. And he's showing you right now in fall camp that he – can run this team but you know the, the young guys Paul Tyson Bryce Young quarterback room is improving quarterback room is improving Bryce Young did some good things in the game like practice he had some struggles he's got to continue to learn the playbook learn uh, get better with his execution get better with his consistency get more knowledge of the system but coach Saban mentioned the young man very talented the young man very gifted the young man has a lot of potential he's just got to get better with the growth of the playbook the knowledge of the playbook the consistency in his execution he is going to be fine at Alabama. Paul Tyson has made significant improvement. I heard from a source just the other day about how he performed in the live action practice he had. You no, know, he completed almost every throw he had against the twos and had a couple of scoring drives in his own right. But right now, QB1, Mac Jones not falling off the map, not crumbling, continuing to show everybody, hey, I got what it takes to get this Alabama team and win a national championship with it. But we take our first break here on the show. Don't touch that dial. We're just getting started. I'll put on return. We entertain your phone calls, your thoughts, your tweets, your chats, your questions on Bama after this. Every sports fan deserves the proper representation. Wit Will Sports introduces to you the title towel. Wave that title towel in the air like you just don't care. In support of Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Only $9.99 and it lasts a lifetime. Head on over to WitWillSports.com and get your title towel today. Remember the taste of Grandma's delicious sweets? Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes brings back those precious memories with just one bite. Each cake made from scratch. They make the perfect dessert to share with family and friends for any occasion, and ordering is easy. Visit Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Click the online store and shop. Then pick up your fresh cake at the kitchen in downtown Homewood. Order yours online at Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes, making memories from scratch. 
are rocking and rolling here on a Wednesday. Hottest show on the streets, number one form for Crimson Tide football news, notes, and information fresh off the Labor Day weekend, Labor Day festivities. This is In My Own Words with yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Excited to have everybody locked and loaded onto the show network and channel on today. And it's your time, Tide Nation, 205-448-1358. The number to call in and let your voice be heard on the show 205-448-1358 and one more time in case you didn't hear me the first two times 205-448-1358 want to hear from you on today got a super chat to shout out here come from the man senator hines dropping in that cool 499 helping us out here with TDA, Senator Hines dropping in that 499 via the Super Chats. Appreciate him. And he's also the first caller to start off this show. Senator, what's going on, man? How you feeling? You know, I'm already hyped, man. 16 days in the wake up to kickoff. This, that fall weather starting to kick in. It, it felt good this morning, but then it got back feeling like summer about 2 o'clock. I had to go ahead and tuck it back in, come in the house. But, uh... <laughs> But yeah, man, I'm I'm excited about this season, man. And I just been reading all the uh, the outlets and the news being put out about our players, and looking at the interviews, rewatching the interviews from players and staff. And I don't know about you, Stephen, but I get a sense of uh, of security, you know, that we haven't felt in probably about two or three years. I, I get that sense of security and confidence um, within the organization and the program as a whole, the football program as a whole. Just, you know, guys seem to be a lot more locked in across the board. Everybody that steps up to do an interview, even the ones that aren't in front of the podium that you're catching on the sidelines, is like the sense of, of knowing where they are. There's a sense of – it's like a sense of togetherness and everybody being on top of their, their game, and I'm, I'm enjoying that feeling. How you, how you been feeling about everything going on? I've been feeling great about it. And, and going back to what you mentioned there, Senator, I, 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 I equate this to one thing. Real competition is back in Alabama. Real competition at every spot. And you go back to last year, the problem was you know, the older players would look behind them and, and go, there are no young guys pushing me, nobody's pushing me. So they sat there and, and used that moment to take a step back, to take plays off, to not give their full effort and, and energy at times. This year, that's not the case. Older players looking back, and they're seeing a grove of young guys hungry, chomping at the bit, nipping at their heels. So they know if I let my guard down for one moment, one of these true freshmen is going to take my spot. It is real. Comp the competition is so real. There is competition at Ponder this season. I never thought right. I would say this. A three competition, way, a three way competition at Ponder. You've got you. you I mean, you've got Ty Piran out there, but you also got Charlie Scott, the brother of J.K. Scott, and you've got you know Will, you've got Will Reichert, who Nick Saban is using as an emergency punter, though he wants to keep him at kicker. And then you got the Sam Johnson, uh, the Sam Johnson dude, but Alabama brought in as a walk-on from Oak Mountain High School in the Birmingham area. So there, there's a sense of urgency here with Coach Saban. He, he is not trying to have a third year slip away in a series where he is not clutching a national championship with Alabama being that champion. So there is competition all across the board. Right, right. And then also I just wanted to touch on that QB room, man. It is looking great. And I've also been hearing that there are some sets um, that they're mapping out, that they're putting into the the scheme just for Bryce Young as far as um, – pass game, uh, run pass option uh, game plan. And um, just looking at, at the highlights that you all have been posting, and uh, also Bama Insider had a few good ones too, um, a couple of clips of them in practice. When I say both of those guys look like they just having fun competing, him, uh, Bryce Young, Mac Jones, and Paul Tyson, all three of those look like they, they're just having fun competing. And it's been to the point where I've seen – you know, Paul Tyson throwing passes to Najee Harris in warm-ups. And, and so, you know, there's, there's no sense of uh, this is my team or, you know, I'm the only one that can run the team. I feel like all the QBs are grasping the concept that it's all their responsibilities to be ready. It's everybody's responsibility to, re to be ready. That, 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 that is true, especially in a conference-only season, in a coronavirus 
type of season here where everybody's getting reps. And, and Coach Saban mentioned it in, uh, in his presser on Tuesday. Everybody's getting reps. Everybody's preparing. Everybody's getting better because you don't know what to expect here in the upcoming season. Now, we're hoping nobody gets hurt. We're praying nobody gets hurt. But right now, Baloo and Ray have done an outstanding job. But Nick Saban always want to make sure that everybody's prepared for every given moment. But, Senator, man, we appreciate the call, man. Keep listening to us. All right, Steve, man. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Y'all know how we do. Keep it popping, baby. Roll tight. Absolutely. Enjoying Senator getting started off here on a Wednesday. We continue with the calls here. You're live on MI on the words. What's going on? I'm doing all right there, Stephen. How you doing today? Doing good, man. Doing good. Getting closer and closer to uh, Alabama, Missouri, which is the 26th of this month in Columbia. And, uh, you know, Alabama in week four of fall camp, getting ready for that second scrimmage this weekend. So looking, looking forward to see, you know, who steps up this week. Oh, yeah, yeah. I believe all the guys are going to be fighting, you know, to be playing in that first string, you know. But uh, I'm pretty sure we'll have a good second string if we need it. So um, I'm just anxious for it to get the ball rolling there. They, uh, you got the high school football going on. And uh, so I think we're still going to have us a good football season this year. It's looking that way. It's, it's looking that way. You, you got high school football happening. Uh, the NFL starts its first starts its season tomorrow with the Chiefs and the Texans playing. So I will watch that. But definitely looking forward to Alabama offensively, defensively, how this team uh, operates and runs this year. I, I, I mentioned it. You know, Coach Saban is coaching with some urgency right now. He knows that the competition has grown around him, against him. But he still feels like, hey – I'm still Nick Saban. I'm still the king of the block here. So he's not trying to have a third year walk out of here without a championship. There you go. I think it's going to be a lot different than it was last year. I think it's going to be uh, LS who is going to be what they're going to be saying to them. So uh, I'm just anxious for Alabama to get back in the swing and uh, having a good year this year. <laughs> Absolutely, and, uh, man. Hey, I- Go ahead. I tell you what, you keep making me hungry there, showing me that Emily's uh, heirloom pound cake on there. <laughs> I'm going to have to give me one of them. <laughs> I mean, you got to, man. Greatest thing on earth, man. Greatest thing on earth is that Emily's heirloom pound cake, man. But we appreciate you calling in, man, <laughs> listening to us today. Continue to listen to us, man. We appreciate it. Sure will. Roll time. Absolutely, guys, firing us up here on the call line. We got another call in the queue right now. You're alive on In My Own Words on a Wednesday. What's going on? Man, what's going on, big dog? Man, I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Closing in on Alabama, Mizzou. Uh, Todd got that second scrimmage this weekend. Want to see who? Want to see if somebody new steps up to the plate? Yeah, that's what I'm calling on, uh, big dog. Hey. What the quarterback looking like uh, after the scrimmage? Now, after after the, after the game like one, the game like one on last Saturday, you know, Mac Jones looked a whole. He, I mean, he looked a whole lot better in terms of completion percentage. Like he was firing on every pass he threw out there, scored on every drive he had against the defense. Uh, Paul Tyson very much so improved. He was looking good out there. Bryce Young did some good things, and he's coming along. It's just he had some moments where he had a couple of turnovers in different spots. Um, you know, he had you know some three and outs here and there, but there there is talent there. There's talent there. There's ability there. He's just got to continue to get better with the playbook, get better in his confidence and execution. But the entire room, it's a great room. Coach Saban's giving reps to everybody because he wants everybody being good. Yeah, big dog. I just can't wait till the 26, man. I'm just waiting for Mizzou. But uh, thanks for taking my call, big dog. Roll time. Appreciate the love, man. Appreciate the love from everybody calling in on the show here. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen M. Smith, as always. If you want your voice being heard on the show, that's 205-448-1358. You know what to do. 205-448-1358. And one more time, 205-448-1358. As we're talking Crimson Tide, as y'all continue to get your thoughts in here, how about one Jalen Waddle? 
Jalen Waddle entering his junior season for the Crimson Tide, the young man out of Houston, Texas, at 5'10", 182 pounds. Last week was the first week of the college football season, week one, and ESPN's College Game Day did its thing. Desmond Howard on that analyst panel there, uh, former NFL wide receiver, played 11 years in the league and also uh, was the uh, former receiver at the University of Michigan, was a Heisman Trophy winner in 1991, was the last receiver slash punt returner to win the award. And, you know, Desmond Howard, he had Alabama as one of his top four seeds in the college football playoff. He had the Crimson Tide winning the national championship over Clemson. And he had Jalen Waddle as his Heisman winner. Desmond Howard had Jalen Waddle as his prediction to win the Heisman. Talked about how, you know, this guy's explosive. You can't keep him off the field. You can't get an angle on him. He's fast. He's explosive. He's electric. He's quick. Big, big time playmaker. This year, Steve Sarkeesian talked about him being an every down receiver, every down weapon, every down target. Alabama going to find ways to get him the ball more naturally, more organically on the field. So can Jalen Waddle win the Heisman? There's potential there. There's hope there. There's a possibility there. He's got a lot of competition, but... Desmond Howard likes who he likes. So he's got Jalen Waddle winning the Heisman Trophy. That's his prediction here for the upcoming season. But we're going to take another break here on this show. Once again, don't touch that dial. Just getting started. When we come back, we sit down with our two guests. First up, you know, former Alabama wide receiver Matt Cadell. Got a little gang with him. And then the lead scouting and recruiting analyst for TDA, Mr. Justin Smith. They're coming up after this. want delicious homestyle cooking, sushi, and hibachi, check out Otoro Hibachi in the University Mall in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. At home and you can't get away from the TV because the Crimson Tide is about to score? Don't worry. Delivery is also available through Waiter and Crimson To Go. That's Otoro Hibachi in the University Mall in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And make sure you let them know the good folks at Touchdown Alabama sent you. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $5.95 per month or pay $49.95 for a full year subscription. That's a saving of almost $22. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. We are back in, folks, from the break here on Wednesday. Hump Day, the number one form for Crimson Tide football news, notes, and information. That being in my own words with yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine, reminding you to give a thumbs up, drop a like on the show, hit that subscribe button, and turn all of those notifications on so that way you can have the best in news notes and commentary on your favorite program that being the crimson tide but we go over to the in my own words hotline where we pick up former alabama wide receiver matt cadell who played from 2003 to 07 matt we're getting closer and closer to the season two weeks away or two to three weeks away but getting closer to bama football matt how you feeling I'm so excited. We got the NFL um, tomorrow. Uh, we've had a few college football games, but I can't wait for the SEC to kick off, be kicked off on September 26th, especially Alabama and Missouri. I mean, very excited to see what the tie looks like. Absolutely going to be a great, going to be a fun matchup, cool matchup going to Columbia, Missouri to watch the tie and the Tigers. So, Matt, we got a little game here as we do every time you're on the show. Got to, got to, got to in infuse some fun and some uh, some excitement in here with our game segment so this game segment is going to be dedicated to the freshman players for the university of alabama we like the older guys we like the veteran guys we like the experienced cats but sometimes those freshmen they come on campus they catch our eye they catch our attention and we're like oh my gosh i gotta see what this young man does on the field here for the crimson tide so Matt, starting this thing off right now, offensively, your big impactful freshman, your most important, your most pivotal impactful offensive freshman, Matt. 
Well, I'm going to start with the most important position, which is the quarterback position. So that makes me go with Bryce Young. I just think, you know, obviously Mac Jones is going to be probably the starter, but I think it's important for our team um, to really generate that depth at the quarter, quarterback position with Bryce Young. we got to get his feet wet. Um, I think the more experience he will have, the better um, he'll be prepared for the future. Um, I think he can give a change of pace in the offense, you know, maybe start to want to change some things up. Um, also, um, with putting him in as a quarterback package. And I just think, you know, when we get up on teams um, kind of similar how, you know, Jalen and Tua was when it was Tua's freshman year. I think uh, Bryce Young will be coming in and um, filling in that role late second half and getting experience and getting meaningful reps. Because, you know, in this coronavirus, you never know who – might go down, who might have the virus. So it's important that especially we get as many young guys, especially Bryce Young, uh, experience game reps uh, and get him a better feel for the offense. Now, before I give mine, Matt, I got, I got to ask this question. So how, how important it is for Alabama to kind of have that wild card type of quarterback that Bryce Young can provide? Because you, you don't have film on him. You don't have tape on him. So you kind of have to sort of play him on the fly based on uh, – you know, trying to see what what can I take away from him to frustrate him. So how important is that to have sort of that wild card type look at the quarterback position if you're Nick Saban in Alabama? I think it's very important. Uh, I think with Mac, you you know, you're going to get what you're going to get, you know, very a prolific passer, um, a little bit better than a game manager. He's very efficient, effective quarterback. But I think sometimes if you want to change up with some of these bigger opponents, you know, maybe change up the pace, um, have Bryce come in. You know, obviously you have Slay, that Bolden package. You know, you, I think Sark and Coach Saban are going to get kind of creative um, with, with the depth we'd have at the quarterback position and with what we can do with Bryce because, you know, he can really affect the, um, the spread game, being a quarterback that can run, that can mobile, can do things outside of the pocket. So you can really throw a lot of um, wrenches at um, defenses. So Matt's going to go with Bryce Young as his most impactful freshman on, on offense for the Crimson Tide. For me, give me Javon Baker. Give me Javon Baker at wide receiver. Javon Baker, to me, my most impactful freshman offensively, and the reason why Alabama's not going to be able to keep this young man off the field. He is going to play at wide receiver. Now, John Metchie's going to do his thing. Slade Bold is going to do his thing, but – I just go back to for a lot of freshmen that have come through this program, especially at wide receiver, through the first couple of days of camp and you start to hear little noises, little bits and pieces of information on how that particular player is doing and how they've been dominating and tearing up ball camp and really turning heads. Javon Baker is one of those guys that's been really turning heads for Alabama in this fall practice, especially on the offensive side of the football. So for me, my impactful offensive freshman give me Baker, number five at wide receiver. This coaching staff is going to have to put him on the field and see what this young man is made of. But flipping this now, Matt, from offense to the defensive side, the big boys on defense. And if you're just tuning into the show, ladies and gentlemen, we got Matt Cadell, former Alabama wide receiver, on the phone line right now, playing for the Crimson Tide from 2003 to 07. Got a little game here talking about the impactful freshman for Alabama on offense and defense. So defensively, Matt, your impactful freshman to harass the quarterback, make big plays who's that defensive freshman well i was, it was i was kind of torn between three guys but i ended up going with you had a uh, three will ring anderson. circus man and you didn't tell me yeah i had a three ring circus it was uh will anderson malachi moore and uh brian branch and just from what i'm reading from what i'm hearing down out of tuscaloosa i just think will anderson is gonna have the you know the biggest impact on the defensive end obviously you know the past couple of years you know what makes alabama's defense so effective is when we have pass rushers coming off the ball, getting to the quarterbacks. Um, and from what I'm hearing, um, uh, Will Anderson has it all. Um, I feel like he's going to make a, a great impact being in that rotation with guys like Ben Davis, um, really getting in that rotation, coming pressure on third down, really physical coming off the edge, and really be a weapon where we can re really affect offenses. Um, just getting him to attack the quarterback, 
get those sacks. And I just think he's going to have a tremendous impact on our defense. You know, if he gets to the quarterback, it forces the quarterback to throw the ball or early, you know, we can get some interceptions, you know, maybe some tip balls some fumbles and help our turnover ratio. So I think he's going to have an immediate uh, impactful impact for our defense. Matt going with Will Anderson, William Anderson, the freshman out of Georgia at the outside linebacker position. For me, I kind of had a two-man race between uh, Drew Sanders and Brian Branch. Drew Sanders, the young man out of Texas, really like him. I think he's going to get on the field. He's going to play. He'll have an impact. But I think Brian Branch will have a bigger impact. When you look at Alabama's defense in the national championship seasons, under Nick Saban, it's always had at least one highlight defensive back. It's always had one highlight corner or safety that you couldn't take your eyes off off of. They were creating interceptions. They were all around the football, forcing fumbles, breaking the passes up. And, you know, Brian Branch, when you watch this young man play on his high school tape, he's got some Minka Fitzpatrick tendencies. There's some Tyron Matthew in his game. There's some Patrick Peterson in there. Like, the, the dude's a flat up dog and when you listen to coach Saban talk about him he's been starting in that nickel package at that slot corner spot in nickel so really like what Brian Branch can bring especially when you look at getting the pass rush to the quarterback and having a guy that could be at the right spot athletic playmaker creating those turnovers really really like Brian Branch there so now we turn our attention to the potential Alabama record for this season, Matt. There are a lot of people that feel like, you know, Alabama could lose a game. Alabama could lose a couple of games. The schedule is too tough. The schedule is too gritty. It's, it's, it's a conference schedule, and it's going to be tough. And it's going to be gritty. But I feel like with this Alabama team, uh, it's built for this type of schedule because the last two years you've been hit with, you're not good anymore. You're not what you once were. You're not what you're used to be. You've fallen off, and that is not, that's not just hit at the players, but also with Coach Saban and the staff. So with this season right here, Matt, what is your projection for the overall record for this season? Uh, well, I just think – I set it up like this. I just think Alabama coming off of an 11-2 and season and watching LSU go undefeated – um, in the regular season, in the SEC, SEC championship, and in the playoff. I think Alabama uh, is going to be looking to that as kind of a, like a, a standard and immediate um, goal is to go undefeated. And I think they want to, um, you know, really um, put their mark on the program and kind of establish that Alabama winning championship standard. And, you know, I was thinking 13-1, but I got them going 14-0. I just think with a 10-game regular season, is going to play to Bama's benefit because, you know, you're going to have to bring your A game every week, every every weekend and week out within the SEC. And I think the way our schedule is set up, um, you know, playing Texas A&M before Georgia and then playing Georgia and then, you know, setting up. By the time we get throughout uh, the second half of the season, I think we'll be that much more prepared. We have an identity and we'll be focused to really move forward and uh, go at keep our eyes on the prowls and go win the championship. So I'm going with 14 and now. Well, with, well, with the 10-game conference schedule, Matt, and then the SEC championship and the two playoff games, uh, for me, for me, I'm going to agree. I'm going to agree in terms of the undefeated season. Give me yeah, 13 and 0. 13 and 0. When you got the 10 games, you've got the SEC championship, which will be 11, and you got the two. You got the semifinal matchup and then the national championship game. So that'd be 13. So 13 yeah, and 0. 13. There. My bad. Sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> you could, man. You could. 13 and 0 for me, and it's because of the fact that, and I've said this before, Coach Saban knows that the competition is getting better around him. He sees Dabo Sweeney rising. He sees what Kirby Smart's doing. He sees that there's going to be a lot of pressure on Jimbo Fisher at Texas A&M because this is year three for Jimbo. And the Aggie Nation is wondering, okay, Jimbo, when's it going to happen? So, and, and even down, and even down, and, 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 then, and, then, and then down at LSU. Then down at LSU, you look at, of course, even with uh, Ed Ogeron losing a lot of talent, you still have LSU fans that feel like, 
they're the best in the business and they got the dynasty rolling there. So, you know, Nick Saban not trying to let a third year escape without winning that championship. He's going to want to establish the Alabama factor, establish going undefeated and really imposing its will on everybody in college football. So I got 13-0 and as well. But he's Matt Cadell, ladies and gentlemen, former Alabama wide receiver, played from 2003 to 07 on here, helping us out here on the show with our game segment, talking about the top impactful freshmen, both offensively and defensively, and what will that potential overall record be for the tie. Matt, as always, man, we appreciate you coming on. Enjoy yourself, man. Be safe. Be good. Take care, buddy. Always. Thank you, and roll tide. Always fun to have Matt Cadell here on the show. We're going to stay on the phone line right now as we go to the lead scouting and recruiting analyst for Touchdown Alabama Magazine, the boots on the ground for the 2021 class and beyond, Mr. Justin Smith. Justin, man, how you feeling? Hope you're doing well. Hope your Labor Day weekend was good. Yeah, everything was good, Steven. Absolutely. Well, uh, well, Justin Alabama picking up that 21st commitment for the 2021 class in the form of three-star tight end Robbie Oots from the state of South Carolina. You know, I've gotten the chance to watch his film. I see the toughness. I see the ability to catch the ball from different angles. Got to polish up the route running a bit more. But what do you like about Oots as, as a prospect here for Alabama as, as he's the 21st commitment? Uh, what stands out to you about Oots and his game at tight end? Well, I think the biggest thing that stands out that stands out about his game is his physicality. As I said, when I broke down when he, when he committed to the Tide, I said he can be the poster child of physicality because he loves to be physical. You can tell that he really loves to put guys on their backs because when he when he does it, he wants to make sure that the defender knows that he did that to them. So I really like the fact that he is a very physical athlete. But I think his athleticism is a bit underrated. This is a kid who stands at 6'4", weighs approximately 250 pounds, and he can dunk the basketball fluently. He's a natural dunker. It looks as if he, it looks, it looks as if he does not have to put too much effort into making a dunk, and I think that shows how naturally athletic this kid is. He is physical in more ways than one, not just as a blocker. He is also very physical when going up and high-pointing the football. But as you said, he's a bit unpolished when it comes to route running. It looks as if he was just running down the field at an awkward angle Angle on a couple of those um, routes there. He, can, he definitely can improve and polish up his route running, but his physicality jumps out on film every time I see him. Now, Justin, we're already into the high school football season, but uh, the number of guys that you've been able to scout out and watch in person so far, which recruit or group of recruits have you been the most impressed with thus far? Well, going back to the guy who I bumped up to a five-star in our own independent rankings, Jeremiah Alexander, the five-star linebacker in the 2022 recruiting class, I mean, who is committed to the tide at the moment, his performance has stand out the most up until this point. Of course, I've seen some guys in the 2022 class and the 2021 class, but his performance was, was at this point the best performance that I've seen. You were, you were talking about a guy who really controlled that Thompson defense, the defense that could be ranked as the number one defense within the state, the way he made quick transformations from rushing from the edge and going back to the inside linebacker positions. He made that transition very fluently between plays. This is a kid who has added on some weight heading into his junior season, and I like to and I like the way he moved with that added on weight. So at the moment, his performance really jumped out to me as far as the guys that I got a chance to see. But there there were a couple of other guys who really stand out. I think T.J. Dudley, another linebacker here out of the state of Alabama in the 2022 recruiting class, had a pretty productive game as well, was able to show off his versatility. There's not many linebackers who go to the safety position doing third and doing third and long and play basically as a safety. So I think he really showed off his versatility. So at the moment I would say T J Dudley and Jeremiah Jeremiah Alexander had 
the most impressive performances that I've seen so far. And coincidentally, um, both of those games were in week one of the high school football season. Now, of course, Justin, you got a chance to be around the 2022 four-star quarterback out of Gordo High School. Just a few, you know, some miles from Tuscaloosa, that being one Tanner Bailey in the 2022 class. You were around him. You were also at one of his games uh, to start the year. And uh, you also mentioned to me before we come on the show that Steve Sarkeesian, Alabama offensive coordinator, has been in constant contact with Bailey. Just talk about that and what Sarkeesian likes about Bailey and just seeing his first game, what was the vibe you picked up there? Ty's coaching staff is trying to stay in contact with 2022 prospects as much as possible because they are in an unusual situation at the moment. But fortunately, this is a situation that they have been forced to deal with over the last couple of months due to the concern over the spread of COVID-19, and that is the lack of of visits and when you look at the Tide's former football schedule before it was cut down to this conference only schedule this Saturday would have been their first home game they would ha- they would have had the opportunity to host recruits here at a home game they would the, the recruits would have had the opportunity to take in Tuscaloosa take in a game the atmosphere they they would not have that opportunity this season um possibly this season they would not have this opportunity at all this season but at least they would not have this opportunity on this weekend. So the Tide coaching staff has to hit the phone line, stay in contact with guys like Tanner Bailey. And as you said, the Tide's offensive coordinator, Steve Sarkeesian, actually texted Tanner Bailey the morning before his game on last Friday, trying to stay in contact, trying to show Tanner Bailey that they are still interested. He has been in contact with several different schools across the nation when he told me the amount of schools that have been in contact with them since September 1st. He just rolled off some big na- big time names, including LSU, Michigan, Clemson, along with the Tide. So I think the four star quarterback out of Gordo will have a lot of teams constantly blowing up his phone. He's Justin Smith, people, the lead scouting and recruiting analyst for Touchdown Alabama Magazine, coming on here to give us the lowdown, the nuggets on the 2021 class with the newest and latest commitment being three-star tight end Robbie Oots, among other things on the recruiting landscape. Justin, we appreciate you coming on, spending time with us here today on the show. Stay safe out there, man. Be good. Travel well, my friend. All right, Dan Stevens. Always great having Justin on and also having Matt Cadell on to talk Crimson Tide football. But we take another break here on the show. You know what this means. We're going back to entertaining your phone calls, your thoughts, your tweets, your chats, your questions. Bring your concerns in. Let's have a conversation. And we'll do it after this. Menswear in the University Mall in Tuscaloosa. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $5.95 per month or pay $49.95 for a full year subscription. That's a saving of almost $22. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. All right, people, we are back in from the break of the number one forum for Crimson Tide. Football news, notes, and information in my own words with yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Crimson Tide taking that field on Saturday, September 26th in Columbia, Missouri to face those Missouri Tigers. Alabama currently working through week four of fall camp. That scrimmage, that second scrimmage at Bryant-Denny Stadium will take place this weekend 
on Saturday. And we're back on you, Tide Nation, 205-448-1358. The number to call in to let your voice be heard on the show, 205-448-1358. And one more time, 205-448-1358. Want to hear from you on your Crimson Tide. What do you want to talk about? What is on your mind? What are you feeling, especially with college football in full swing and the NFL in full swing as well? First NFL game on tomorrow, that being Chiefs and Texans. Going to have to check that out. We got a call here in the queue. You're live on In My Own Words. What's going on? Hey, Stephen M. This is Spencer. How you doing, sir? Doing fantastic, my man. Getting ready for this Alabama scrimmage of the second scrimmage this weekend. Outstanding. I got a two-parter for you. The first one is, I've been kind of curious, who do you think is going to be the freshman standout on special teams this year? We always have one that you always know that stands up. Who do you think it's going to be this year? That is a, oh, that's a good question. Freshman standout on special teams. Let, let's see here. I'm going to go with the corner. I'm going to go with the cornerback. Watch Malachi Moore. Watch Malachi Moore. I'm going to go up the corner, watch Malachi, I, I, and, and I've said this before, he's probably not the most highlight type of player as a Brian Branch is in the secondary, but to me, Malachi Moore is the black Vinny Sanceri. And when Vinny Sanceri played here, this dude lit you up on special teams, and he lit you up on defense. And he was one of the smartest guys in the room. So Vinny, so I... Uh, uh, give me Malachi Moore. Yes, Malachi Moore. So you're thinking he's going to be the one that brings the leather, leather this year? He's he, he going to bring the leather. If, if you haven't seen it, Spencer, there's a video that Alabama had from practice where there was a pass in the flat to uh, Thayu jones Bell, the receiver, number 14 in a drill. Malachi Moore comes up to Thayu jones Bell and lowers the wood on this dude. And Nick Saban's looking at him like Malachi. You're supposed just to hand touch him, not thump the dude. Well, that's awesome. I would definitely check that out. But on my way out, so I got other. I know with other people in the queue want to get in. Since uh, President Whalen uh, decided to opt out tonight, I got a little poem for you. Roses okay, are red. Let's go. All right, roses are red, violets are blue. Alabama's back. They're going to crush you. Have a good night, sir. Hey, you know what? Wait, no, Spencer, appreciate that. Appreciate yes, that, Spencer. <laughs> right. Appreciate the love they're coming from Spencer Revley, man, doing his best Wayland, you know, impersonation or giving us that poem there for the day. But we got to have a we got a super chat shout out here. How about Kevin Compton? Kevin Compton throwing in that four ninety nine. Via the Super Chats helping us out there. We appreciate that love coming from Kevin Compton on Super Chats donating that $4.99 there helping out us here at TDA. But as always, folks, you want to have your voice heard on the show, and we encourage that. 205-448-1358. You know what to do. 205-448-1358. And one more time, 205-448-1358. We want to hear what you have to say. When you look at Alabama football, we are closing in on a football season. It's crazy. And it's, it's gone from the paranoia of will we have football? Will football happen? Will it happen? Is it going to happen to football's here? Football 100% here. But cool NFL topic, uh, Tua Tonga Valoa, former Alabama quarterback Tua Tonga Valoa, it is official. He has been named the backup quarterback, the primary number two quarterback for the Miami Dolphins behind one Ryan Fitzpatrick. The Dolphins decided to part ways with Josh Rosen. Poor dude can't catch a break. <laughs> Josh Rosen, former first round pick of the UCLA Bruins. Uh, he, he was first off with the, with the Cardinals, and the Cardinals traded him to the Dolphins. Now, the Dolphins have, have, uh, the Dolphins have released him, so he's now with the Buccaneers. Josh Rosen can't catch a break, but you know what? This is good for Tua. Really good for Tua. You get a chance to sit behind Ryan Fitzpatrick, a 38-year-old journeyman who's played the, in the NFL for going into his 16th season. You get a chance to learn from Fitzpatrick. Uh, Fitzpatrick has already said, I'm a placeholder for Tua. I am simply a placeholder for Tua. So at some point, it's going to be Tua time 
in Miami. But at least as of right now, he is the primary backup behind Ryan Fitzpatrick. But we take another call here in the queue. You're live on in my own world. Well, call, call hung up there, but... It, Call back. Feel free to call back. Whoever that was calling in, feel free to call back. 205-448-1358. The number to call in and let your voice be heard. 205-448-1358 to get your conversation on when it comes to Crimson Top football. But, uh, but yeah, but, but, but the call is back in the queue here. You're live on In My Own Words. What's going on? Terrence DeBart left me What's on your mind, man? Yes, sir. I was calling to see. Oh, uh, I was calling to see who go. Let's see. Is uh Bryce Young gonna start today? Bryce Young not gonna start today. Bryce Young not Bryce Young not gonna start this year. He's good. He's talented. He will get out there on the field, definitely play. Got to continue to grow, though. I mean, not having the spring, not having the spring set him back a little bit. You know, missing that first scrimmage set him back a little bit. He's got a ton of talent. And Nick Saban mentioned that, but Coach Saban wants to see him grow in that playbook and wants to see him grow with his execution. So he's got to continue to learn. Oh, that Turn your speakers down, no. sir. Is, uh, he looks like he's very good. He's good. And like Coach Saban mentioned, he's got a lot of talent. And despite the fact that he didn't have a spring, he has caught on to some things very quickly. It's just that, you know, at Alabama, you got to be able to do a lot of things well as a freshman. Like, a lot of things are put on you as a true freshman coming in. You know, and even with Tua, it took two of some time also, but he's going to be good. He's going to be fine, but we appreciate the call, man. We got another call coming into the queue right now on the show. You're live on In My Own Words. What's going on? Hey, Stevie, what's going on? It's Sean from Atlanta. Sean, what's uh, happening with you? Oh, nothing much. I'm good. I'm good. I'm just at work. I was glad I was able to catch y'all before y'all done went off, but, uh, I'm I'm just happy. The main thing is I'm just happy nobody is hurt. Cause for the past few Absolutely. seasons, we always yeah. For the past few seasons, them, them injuries been killing us even before the season even started. So I'm just happy that no injuries. I think we had one person who had like a minor knee problem. I hope he's he's I hope he's good and he will be ready for the season. But that's just my main thing. You know, I'm just ready for the season, just like everybody else, and that's all I got to say. 100% Sean we appreciate that call and, and, and I'm right there with you I mean for the, for the last few years prior to this year there's been issues with with injuries and, and medical mishaps and I know so far in camp Alakaho had a slight knee issue but he's back out there in practice now and he's been back you know for a minute now he's back in the rotation so you got to give Baloo and Ray you know a kudos for you know keeping our guys healthy out here on this field and just want to stay that way just want to stay that way Exactly. All right, man. You have a good one in World World Tide. Appreciate the love there coming from Sean out of Atlanta there giving us that uh, that call there. I'm happy that the guys are staying healthy out there on that field. But Tua Tagovailoa look at, uh, has been named the primary backup quarterback for the Miami Dolphins. Going to be fun to watch him this season. But we take another break here on the show. Don't touch that down. My favorite topic's coming next. Coach Saban has been preaching about the Bama factor. Older players have been talking about it, but now we are seeing the young bucks, the young bloods, the young cats, the young players. They are embracing the Alabama standard. This is huge. And we'll talk about that after this. If you're an avid Alabama Crimson Tide fan and you love to flaunt it, then show your Alabama Crimson Tide support by grabbing the Alabama sneakers. They feature bold Crimson Tide graphics, so no one will be able to question where your allegiance lies. When you add these sweet sneakers to your Alabama Crimson Tide collection, go to stsfootwear.com and use the code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. That's code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. Go to stsfootwear.com and get your Alabama sneakers today. 
Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $5.95 per month or pay $49.95 for a full year subscription. That's a saving of almost $22. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. We're jumping in, we're jumping in, we're jumping back in from the break here on the hottest show on the streets, the number one form for Crimson Tide football news. That being in my own words with yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Appreciating you guys for checking us out, ringing the phones, dropping those thoughts in the chat line on today in the Super Chats as well. And before we get into the final topic here, got to remind you of TDAware.com. That is TDAware.com where we have the We Want Football shirts and the Let Them Play shirts. You can purchase either of the two. You can purchase both. Don't care what you do. But we got the We Want Football shirts and the Let Them Play shirts. You can get both of those TDAware.com. For those of you out there that that eat, sleep, breathe, dream Alabama football. You are for this program. You are for the coaching staff. You are for the players. We want football shirts, let them play shirts, courtesy of TDAWare.com. We have other apparel as well. So if, you, if you're supporting the players, if you're supporting the team, if you're supporting us here at TDA, got to get that TDA Wear apparel right there. But as we look at here now, it's awesome to see, you know, uh, young players stepping up, embodying the, the Alabama factor. And uh, I spoke on this earlier about how – Coach, Sa- Coach Saban is coaching with a sense of urgency this year. And there's competition all around the field. There's competition at every single position. Saban does not want this third year in a series, third year in a row, third straight year, a third consecutive year. He doesn't want a third year to go by without his hands being on a national championship trophy with Alabama being the, the national champion. And... It's one thing when you see Saban and the coaching staff talk about the Alabama standard, and that's great, but they're the coaches. They're the ones that are supposed to be putting the information out there, putting the goals out there, putting the aspirations out there. That's that's their job. They're supposed to talk about that. And while it's great to hear you know, older players catch on to the message and disperse it throughout the team, it's awesome hearing Mac Jones and... Devontae Smith and uh, uh, Mac Jones, Devontae Smith, guys like Joshua McMillan, Dylan Moses, LeBron Ray. I mean, it's great hearing those guys talk about this, but once again, they're the veterans. They're the older players. It's their job to take that message, disperse it throughout the team. But when you start seeing the young guys talk about it, when you start hearing the young guys embrace the standard, embrace the culture, embrace the moniker, that is Alabama football, that is make opposition helpless, one-dimensional, ineffective. When you got young guys, freshmen and sophomores talking about this, that's a big deal because it means you're seeing a unified team, that statement, that word, that slogan, it's becoming more than just a slogan. It's being planted, it's being watered, it's being cultivated. Everybody's buying into it. And on Monday, Christian Harris Alabama sophomore linebacker spoke to the media for the first time in his career, and he is all in on it. Check out what Christian Harris had to say. Uh, you know, the Alabama standard is something we talk about every single day. You know, workouts, meetings, practice, you know, we got to approach everything, you know, with that mentality that, you know, we want to be the best. I mean, especially last season, you know, being 11 and 2 at Alabama, that's not, you know, something that we would look back at and, you know, be happy about or be proud of, you know, of course we want to go undefeated. We want to win national championships. So, and that's the Alabama standard, you know, we're working each and every day, coming in every day, you know, since we got back from that bowl game versus Michigan, you know, we've been working, talking about it every single day. And I think it's really been a really big motivating factor for us, you know, to keep us pushing and just want to get better. Christian Harris looking swole, looking jacked up, looking like he's ready to put somebody on the ground. And this is a sophomore speaking for the young players. He's talking about 11 and 2. Yo, that's not us. Nobody was proud with that. Nobody's happy about that. 
That's not how you want to finish the season. He talked about it. Here at Alabama, we're about going undefeated. We're about winning national championships, and it's fun. It's nice hearing coaches say that. It's nice hearing older guys say that. But when young players, when you can have a guy to speak for the young folks, when you have young players embracing that mentality, embracing that mindset, embracing that moniker, having that type of get up and go about themselves, it means, okay, Nick Saban's got a fully unified team here. Coach Saban's got everybody locked in. Nobody's taking a break. Nobody's taking a step off. Nobody's playing around. Everybody's in here on this one common goal, which is be better all across the board, be dominant all across the board, be dynamic all across the board, be physical all across the board, and most importantly, you know, end the season winning a championship. And, uh, you know, I, I go back to the last two years, especially uh, the 2019 season, and uh, you had Coach Saban and his staff. They were preaching. They were talking until they were blue, purple in the face about, we got to have the Bama factor. We got to play to the Bama factor. We got to play to our standard. We got to play to our role. We got to play to what we know our whole mindset is. And Coach Saban, he kept preaching it, kept talking it, kept talking it, but it just felt like it fell on deaf ears because the older guys – they weren't processing it. They weren't getting the gist of it. They weren't paying any attention. They were not all the way there, all the way locked in. And when you have older guys that are not all the way locked in, it hinders those young players because those young guys are like, well, if so-and-so and so-and-so ain't locked in, then why should I be locked in? He didn't been here for a whole century. He didn't been here for 100 years. So if Coach Saban preaching to this man and he ain't listening, and he ain't buying in, and he ain't acting right, then what the heck am I supposed to do? So you had to, you had the young players kind of in a frenzy, stuck in limbo, because the older guys were not taking heed to the message coming from the coaching staff and dispersing it around the room. Now, in this season, you have a fresh crop of older, guy, of older guys that saw, okay, the last two years, this is what happens when uh, we are not focused on playing Alabama football. We're not focused on being disciplined. We're not focused on being tough. We're not focused on taking pride in our work. We're not focused on taking pride in our performance. We're not focused on communicating. We're not focused on commitment. We are not doing the things that has made this program the way it has been prior to us getting in here. And um, we see when we do not follow Coach Saban, the domino effect that happens, we don't want that. So this year's crop of veterans has taken the full notion of the message from Coach Saban and the staff, but they're not just taking it and applying it themselves, but they are reiterating and they have been on the butt of these freshman players saying, hey, Y'all take ownership too. The sophomores, hey, y'all take ownership too. Even the red shirt guys, hey, y'all take ownership. Like if, if we got to sit here and we got to get chewed out and we got to do what this coaching staff is asking us to do, then y'all as, as the young players, hey, fall in line. And it's awesome seeing how you know, Christian Harris, as a true sophomore, second season, comes up to the podium full on embracing hey last year that wasn't us that was not alabama football that's not what we're known for you know i came here to win championships i came here to go undefeated i came here to play with the best of the best and that's what christian harris trying to get done this season in his attempts to you know help nick saban capture that seventh national championship to surpass the legendary paul bear Bryant and also help the school win its 18th national championship in program history but i just felt like that was awesome seeing these young players step up hit the podium and talk about hey just like the coaching staff just like the older guys we weren't feeling last year either we want to do something about that so that's fantastic but you want to know or have or access the best news, notes, information, coverage on your Crimson Tide. People, this is very simple and easy to do. You get this by downloading the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app. You do this from the iPhone App Store. 
if you're rocking Team Apple, Google Play Store if you have the Android phone. For your audio listening needs, we have you covered here, iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn Radio, Google Play, Overcast.fm, or iHeartRadio. We have you covered. As always, Bama Nation, you can purchase individual copies of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Have those sent to your door. That link is in, in the description. Also, you have a bit longer to get that online subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine. TouchdownAlabama.com. $5.95 a month. Best in Alabama football news. Get the annual print magazine and also the exceptional recruiting news from our own Justin Smith. And this goes until September 15th. $5.95 a month. Check it out. That link found in the description as well. Touchdown Alabama.com. But until next time, folks, husbands love your wives. Wives appreciate value of those husbands. Children continue doing those things legitimately now to not be bored, even with school back in. Get you those three hearty meals a day, those three great laughs a day. Protect yourself. Protect the loved ones around you. I'll be back on Friday continue to continue the conversation that is tied football. But until next time, folks, spending my own words. 